are looking to improve their position to secure a first round bye. Now, Buffalo is currently the number one seed and Allen will look to carry the load. Bengals coach Zach Taylor is well aware and here's how he's game planning for Sunday. He's a great quarterback. Uh, you know, we've seen him all year on, on the offense side of the ball because of a crossover tape with that division. And, and just them playing our opponents, our division, us playing their division, we probably crossed over with Buffalo seven or eight times this year. And so we've, we've gotten a full dose of what he does. Um, really exciting player, extends plays, the play's never dead, all hands on deck when you're trying to corral him in the pocket and having to cover downfield and brings an element to the quarterback run game. You know, that can be a challenge as well. So th there's a lot of things that they do offensively that, that you've got to prepare for and be ready for. This is going to be an exciting one. And this is the first matchup between Josh Allen and Joe Burrow, which is a little surprising. I, I shocked me a little bit because you would think two of the top quarterbacks, two of the the next generation. We've been talking a lot about yes. that next generation, right? These are these are the top two guys that everyone's talking about. The next the next superstars that are coming into their own. This is going to be a great matchup. Well, it's important also because yeah. they would like to have the top seed. That's very, that's very important. So it's exciting that it, the game actually matters and they're playing for something as well. I, I also think it'll be a good, a good gauge where both of them are right now. The right. Bengals struggled early and have definitely gotten back on track. Joe Burrow's in the MVP conversation. The Bills started strong. And then had a little stretch there, mm -hmm. and now there's still some questions about how they're offense is going to perform at the highest level up against these great teams so this is an a, an amazing game to have on monday night as we're heading into the end of the season and into the playoffs and yeah this is the future of the nfl so yeah. hopefully we'll get lots of more of these matchups between burrow and josh allen and these are two guys that everyone's obviously josh allen everyone expects and has been talking about should be in a super bowl joe burrow was just in a super bowl last season both first round picks so Earlier this year. it's gonna be fun <laughs> Oh, yeah. Earlier this year. You can say that for another couple of days. Yes. Here. All right. Well, let's move on because the Lions are coming off a bad loss to the Panthers in week 16. But an NFC wildcard spot is still within reach. Now, head coach Dan Campbell wants the team to recalibrate ahead of Sunday's matchup with the Bears. And Jared Goff is echoing that, that statement and said, we need to recalibrate and respond and find Find ways to get better and improve and beat Chicago. The adversity we've been through this year is much greater than one loss. We're treating them like any other team. I don't care who it is. We, we were a team like that last year, and we, we felt like we could beat anybody. They feel the same way. So, yeah, show up and get, get ready. Now, the Lions started the season 1-6. and six. They've won six of their last eight games. That's a dangerous team. This is where you want to be sitting right now. But, you know, the playoff scenario, they have to beat the Bears and the Packers. So, it's... No. It's they tough. have to beat the, the Bears and the Packers. Yes. And then they need the Commanders and the Seahawks each to lose one game. So, there's so a lot. It, there, there, there's a lot. It's, it's a stretch. They are not completely in control no. of their playoff future. But what they can control is winning these next two games. Uh, it was a bad week for them last week week yeah I I think that the Lions are a very dangerous team and I would not want to play the Lions if mm -hmm. they find a way into the postseason because of what you just read yeah. they are a team that completely believes they can beat anyone yes. now I am aware you need more than to just believe that you can beat somebody but they've all also won six of the last eight games they, that, that, that shows it too. that part the problem yeah. is you got to be able to stop someone on the other end yeah that's what matters the offense really has not been an issue all season long jared goff has had a great season they have weapons they can put up points mm -hmm. that's what makes them scary can they stop anyone and they've got to start their potential postseason run by winning these next two games they have it they have what it takes they're fully capable so do what you need to do and let the rest fall where it may i mean this is why you have to to be good all season long yep. so there's not a situation where you're depending on other people to get into the postseason but whatever happens with the lions they should feel good on what, what they've built this year exactly uh, i mean i don't i don't think you should get out of control if they don't make the postseason like 
you do need to be making the postseason. Yeah. That is that is the, the progression of a team that that's getting better. They are getting better, mm -hmm. but it's one thing to go on a run during the regular season. It's another thing to make the postseason. So, so I'm I'm interested to see how they play these next two weeks. Yeah. I think it'll be, you know, whatever happens, if they win their next two games, they, they should hang their hat on that because they did what they needed to do at the end mm -hmm. of the season. Turned it around. To make it and, you know. Went on a great run. Whatever the, the football gods decide that's out of your control is yeah. what it is. Still got a chance. Yeah. Which is what you want in your last two games this season. Well, you'd like to clinch and be in the playoffs. It, but if you're not clinched. Yes. <laughs> Obviously, yes. Have, have Best it case scenario. your control, yes. Well, let's talk about the game tonight. Shall we? The Cowboys and the Titans are set to face off Thursday night football. The Cowboys have already secured a playoff spot, but need to avoid a loss to keep their division title hopes going. Now, on the other side of the ball, the Titans are looking ahead to their Week 18 matchup with the Jaguars that will decide the AFC South. So they have a number of starters out with Malik Willis being benched in favor of Josh Dobbs and Derrick Henry listed as doubtful. Now, Fox bet makes the Cowboys a 13 and a half point favorite at the Titans tonight. Things are shaping up pretty nicely here for the Cowboys. Out for the Titans, obviously, Ryan Tannehill, Malik Willis, Bud Dupree, Jeffrey Simmons, Derrick Henry. Like, their main core of guys are not going to be out there on the field. Well, Tony Pollard's not going to play tonight. I okay. believe so. He's yeah. out. Um, yeah, he he's not. He hasn't practiced all week. Tony Pollard is out tonight. Yeah, for the Cowboys. Now they still have Ezekiel Elliott, so obviously they're still in good shape. Yeah, I mean this is this is a good game for the Cowboys to go out and play a nice clean game and win a game. Win a game. Win this. Obviously they're still in the playoffs no matter how this goes. But yeah. with everything that the Titans have missing and they're you gearing up for their early playoff game next week yeah should be a nice easy convincing win should be for the cowboys tonight yes should be should be <laughs> that's alex curry with the news well that's the news and thanks for stopping by the herd lie news joy taylor in for colin cowherd on the herd let's bring in our friend mark sanchez fox sports and the NFL analyst, Mike, Mike. played 10 NFL seasons. Yeah. USC legends. Talk to me, ladies. What do we got? <laughs> Mark, Sanchez. We got? Mark Sanchez was a part of my brother's, well, my favorite year of my brother's career. Awesome. I can't speak for my brother and say that. 2010? But it was mine. Yes. He's yeah, it was a great year. Did I tell you the story about him doing about garage sales? Yeah. Uh, you've told me the story, but you can tell the audience. Share it. Come on. He had the Jordan My brother's deal. Jason Taylor, by the way, if you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's make sure we're clear here. I mean, it's um, the only reason I have this job, so but I should always remind people. One of the coolest dudes I've ever met uh, was, you know, you're like not terrified of guys like that, but you're just like, damn, dude, that's like freaking Jason Taylor. Is he Taylor, intimidating? Man. Well, I mean, because you see his size and stature, and then I've watched him play for so long, and then he's like in the locker room with you. And so you got to like keep it cool, but try not to get all starstruck. But he had this Jordan deal and we have the same size foot, believe it or not. And I was fired up because he's like got boxes stacked as tall as he is. <laughs> and he would just say like garage sale, who's a 14 or 13 and a half, you know? Oh. And like, you could go pick out shoes. And I was like, is this guy serious? This is the coolest dude I've ever met. So we get what free Jordan turfs and like <laughs> all the gear. Like he was Score. the coolest guy ever. Yeah. Yeah. He was great. And, and so under the center, nobody's under center anymore, but way back in the day, you put your hands under the center's rear. And I had a, a tick when, when I would snap the ball and I would kind of flinch right before I was going to snap it. And he was so low to the ground in his stance, a defensive end, he, he could see it. And so he's getting off on the snap count in training camp. Right. And I'm like, bro, what is your deal? Like, is this just a veteran deal? He's like, I got to tell on you. I'm not going to tell you until after training camp. <laughs> it's like, what? So he well, wanted to, to make keep sure using I'm on it this team. to yeah. his advantage. And then after training camp, he told me. So sometimes I would flinch on purpose just to throw it off.
during the season. So yeah, that's got a couple famer. free five yard, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. offsides from Listen, that. So you, you got to you choose take advantage. You three yards. Do. JT's the man. Yeah, um, that's awesome. So you had another story that oh, you were telling no. us in the <laughs> in the break before oh, you no. came on. Alex did this story earlier today. Yeah, I, I mean, I listened on I, the way to, up. That's yeah, why to I be heard honest, it. I haven't gotten very involved. Involved in this Eli Apple Mac Jones beef, Ugh. my my suggestion, and I, I wonder if you agree with me for Mac, is, is that it's probably not the best idea to inc- to lean into the villain role as the quarterback, no. the quarterback position. Um, you might just get dunked on by someone like Chandler Jones. You know. <laughs> <laughs> There are opportunities oh, for bigger soon. guys on the field too to soon. remind you that they 